Good morning and welcome to Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. I'm Nancy Allspaugh Jackson. And I'm Shannon Penrod. We've got a huge show for you, including we're going to talk about this little guy on the desk in a little while. Uh, and it's been a big week for, especially for you, I think it's been a big week for a lot of people and there are a lot of things that you're going to, we're going to talk about. Right. Um, even some things that have, you've been in the news a lot. We're going to talk about all that right. later. Okay. Um, but we're, we want to start out the show um, with our fabulous guest, Vince Redmond. Right. Do we have him on yet? Are we... Oh, he's there. Right, Vince is there. Uh, Vince is there. And Vince is, for those of you who are just tuning in and joining us for the first time, Vince Redman is an amazing licensed and marriage family therapist. Uh, he's been with the Center for Autism and Related Disorders for, what, 708 years, Vince? <laughs> It's been something a long, like that. Something like that. It's going on. It's going on that. <laughs> a long, long time. And Vince started out uh, working directly one on one with kids on the autism spectrum, and then went on to become a licensed marriage and family therapist. I always like to say that in, in the realm of, we all know that we need some form of counseling. You just right. can't get through this completely no. on your own. You need something. And and a lot of times, I know Jim and I went to go to counseling, and we were met with somebody who said, "Well, I've heard your story, and I think you should stop doing that." AB ABA thing that you're doing, right? It's totally right. not useful. Right. So what a gift Vince is to us and to the world that he can see things on both sides of that fence. Mm -hmm. What it's what you need to do to stay married and have happy family and happy everyone, siblings and everybody, but he gets the ABA thing and why you're all in right. on ABA, right. which we love. So Vince, if you haven't heard, I adore the ground you walk on. Um, and we're so thrilled and, and fortunate to have you here on a regular basis. And thank you so much for being with us. Are you no having you having happy holidays so far? So far, it's been busy. Yeah, that's <laughs> yes. the word, right? Busy it has not been a dull moment yet. <laughs> which dovetails right into our topic for the day, which yes. is anxiety. And I have um, some. you have some anxiety. <laughs> I don't know yeah. how anybody could not how right could anybody now. Anybody not. Yeah. Right. Right. And Christmas just came up on us so quick, and um, unfortunately, that brings a lot of anxiety with it because we feel like we need to prepare, and preparing all those extra duties that we have can yeah. make it very stressful. Yeah. Well, and I think that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? Because I don't know about everybody else, but any time, even now, when Jem is doing so well. When things come up that remind me that our situation isn't what other people's situation is, it's a, uh, and the more that he was affected by it, the more there was that, uh, you know, of, oh, right, we don't get to have it like everybody right. else, which right. what brought up anxiety in me. And then I think it, that brought up anxiety in him. So every, everybody's got a touch of it. But Vince, talk to us a little bit about uh, from from the parents' perspective and about what we can do about our anxiety and then what we do with our kids when they're having anxiety. Well, I think you just touched a little bit on the first thing is that it, you know, it's typical that we all have anxiety during this time, right? It's it's the holiday season, which it's glorious and it's lovely and it's, it's fantastic, but it also creates a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, a lot of timelines. And, our, you know, we're doubling that with also, we got to make sure we're maintaining treatment and we're maintaining, um, you know, uh, our appointments and making sure that, you know, that our kids are continuing progressing and we don't want them to to regress at any point during this time. So there's a lot of extra stressors, extra anxiety that our families feel that not everybody else feels. So we're adding on top of our regular holiday anxiety, the anxiety of making sure treatment um, continues, make sure that everything is gonna be okay. Now it dovetails into some of the things you were saying in regards to where does some of that extra anxiety come from with the kids? And it's, remember at holiday season, a lot of change happens, right? So change that we actually look forward to but with our kids they might not understand some of the change lights are on trees lights are on houses parties change schedules change right uh, sometimes we rearrange our house right um so there's a lot of environmental programming changes that happen that create more a lot of times unsaid kind of more of a lower level anxiety with our kids that we need to address we need to be able to talk them through it we need to be able to point out the changes make sure that they they're comfortable that it's okay that the light that you know the house next door is now lit up or that there's a tree in our living room now or there's a, a you know a, 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 a candle um, that's in the, in the 
you know, entryway or what, whatever it may be, that we make sure that we talk to them about it, make sure we give them information so that they are aware that these changes are happening and why. Yeah, I, you know, I just as you're saying this, there was a moment yesterday, because, you know, a lot of us here in Southern California have been really affected by fires mm-hmm. in the last 24 hours. And Which is uh, just what you need to have to evacuate on top of everything else, right? Well, but, you know, for, like, I didn't end up having to evacuate last night, but I know people who did evacuate. Right. But that evacuating is inconvenient. Coming back to your house burned down to the ground is a whole other thing. Right. And I was amazed by how many people were saying, it's just stuff, it's just stuff, you know, good on them. Because I would have been crying, you know, around all the ashes. But there was a there was a point yesterday when things were getting a little hairy. And where we live, we, there were two fires. So my son's school got closed, and I needed to meet my husband. We had to get my husband to work. It was all this rigmarole, and we weren't sure what to do about the dog. So I said, "Put the dog in the car. I'll meet you halfway. I'll take the dog. I'll go home. And if we have to evacuate, I'll be packing stuff." But so the dog got in the car. We all had gas masks on. The not gas masks, but you know, filter masks right. on. And my dog was having this little reaction to it. And I was explaining to Gemma, I said, well, if you look at it from her perspective, she, we had stopped and gotten some in and out for her so she would be in the car and okay. So we were feeding her hamburgers and French fries in the back seat. But we took a picture and she had this look on her face like, and I said to her, I said, you know, she's thinking, what crazy holiday is this where you guys, where it's all smoky and you guys are wearing masks and you feed me hamburgers? Yeah. Are, we, are we going to the place where they, you know, lock me up and you guys go away for days? What's going on here? Like you could feel her anxiety because right. she was like, this is not ordinary. Yeah. And I think holidays, you know, uh, we, we had the sensitive Santa on, on Saturday and kids were coming in and I was reminding parents, you know, this is a big guy in a red suit that they yeah. don't see on a regular, right. it just seems all so weird and random. And all the adults are acting like it's okay, but it's pretty random. It is. It is. It's pretty When you think about it, right? I mean, a lot of the, we, we look forward to it because we understand the changes. We understand what's going on. And a lot of our kids, depending on, you know, how many, you know, experiences they've had with, with the holidays, this is all new, right? Yeah. Every year it's new again. Every year it's new again. You know, the house is changing. The, the neighborhood changes. You know, the music changes. The, you know, the schedules change. You know, some of the stuff that we take for granted in our daily routine, those change. You know, school gets out. School gets There's out, time yeah. Off, you know? That's There's the cause of, of a lot of stress because of the holiday. With our kids out of school, we don't necessarily know what to do with them. Right. And, and even so the that, food so, changes. There's a lot more sugar yeah, and right. things that can mess them up. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yes. And we kind of accept it as just being, oh, this is it. But to them, it's got to look weird. It has to. Right. And again, that's why we want to talk to them about it, acknowledge it, work them through it, right? Anxiety is always, you know, they, they experience a lot of anxiety for multiple different reasons throughout, you know, their 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 lifespan and also throughout the year if we're looking at it just in a condensed year form. Um, and and Dennis, and it, if I can interrupt you for just a second, because I can just hear some parents who are saying, but my kid doesn't have language. Do we assume with all kids receptively, we still we still language it and in hopes that some of it will make a certain amount of sense? Yes. Okay. I, yes. I, I think that's So for important. nonverbal children, we still need to verbalize need to what's going on. About it. Yeah. Absolutely. You want to verbal, that's a perfect way of saying it, Nancy. You want to verbalize with them, talk to them about the changes, identify the changes so that they know that you're aware of the changes as well. A lot of times, you know, their anxiety will be will be remediated if they know that the parents are aware of the changes, if the parents are accepting. If they see the parents aren't upset that there's lights on the house next door, their anxiety will slowly lower over time because they'll see that it's not it's not anything to be anxious about and they don't have to be able to say those things to really understand yeah we and we um are are going to in the news in a little while talk about a recent study that's out that suggests that you know it's sort of the chicken and the egg which comes first anxiety and then not being able to um, participate in social uh moments that they just fly by you or is it the other way around that you're not able to participate in social things 
and that I, anxiety comes from that. Well, a lot of people have said that it's the second, but this study suggests that it may be exacerbates first. social communication problems and not the other way around. Yeah, and, and there's, I, you know, I think it could probably be both, but it makes sense to me that one of the big takeaway, I don't know that, because they said that there were over, they were trying to look at people over the years and they lost a lot of people in their sample, but the takeaway that I got from it was don't let anxiety go, treat it. If you're thinking, right. well, my child has anxiety, and so we're just going to see because maybe by the time he's five, he won't. And they were saying, not a good plan. Your child is going to lose out on more things. But Vince, when we've got a three and a four and a five-year-old who have got anxiety and, and people say treat it, I think pe the assumption is that people are talking about medicating it. And nobody wants to do that. But there, are there, there other is things? actually no way to, to medicate anxiety when children with autism. Don't. But I think that's what the preconception that parents have, that you're going right. to drug my child. Right. But so talk to us a little bit about what would we do with a three-year-old or a four-year-old or a five-year-old who's having a lot of anxiety? I think you're both right. I think, I, I think just societal on a norm, when they hear doctors and research that come out and say that they need to treat anxiety i think everyone's first reaction that's outside of our you know our, our field is that it's a, a medicinal intervention for anti-anxiety medications and so forth um however 100 percent agree that's not what you know what what they're alluding to they're alluding to typically behavioral treatments to reduce anxiety build coping strategies build understandings um, of different things and when you're talking with a three and a four year old first we have to identify where some of their anxieties are coming from where some of their stressors are coming from some of it might be communication that they're not being able to communicate some of it might be again like you said environmental and some of it might be you know, uh, uh, part of their disorder in regards to change of schedule or, or, or um, not being able to, um, you know, uh, perseverate on certain behaviors or, or on certain um, objects because we're there changing it. We're there, you know, uh, integrating in new behaviors and more of, you know, socially and functionally appropriate behaviors. That creates anxiety, right? We're changing the way they, they stimulate themselves. We're changing the way that they, to some extent, entertain themselves to try to teach them new ways. That creates anxiety. So when we can, when we can identify the type of anxiety, then we can always come up with behavioral treatments to be able to either desensitize or have more exposure to positive um, practices. We can, you know, uh, uh, talk, you know, with with higher um, level anxieties, we might be able to talk to them about the anxieties, talk to them about schedule changes, give more visual reminders of, of schedule changes that might be upcoming using more transitional warnings you know lots of different things that we can do behaviorally to help mediate any type of anxiety one of the things that i think is amazing at card is that uh, for families that are not getting aba you're going to have to put this together yourself if you're getting good quality aba we we can all say the recommendation would be to start talking to your team about it to see what they can do but, but I think it doesn't treat the whole thing. And one of the things that I find particularly stellar at CARD is that now, because Vince, you head up the CARD family services, that somebody, if you are a CARD family and you have, if you, the parent, and or the child is having anxiety, and I find that most times it's both, right? right? And that's just across the board, it's both. Right. Um, that you can talk to your supervisor to make your team aware and deal with that. But then the other arm of it is that they can talk to you and car or someone else on your team, Vince, in Card Family Services, and then you can be looking at this and helping to treat the entire family. Is that correct? Absolutely. And, and, this, and again, this, it's a busy time of year for this as well, yeah. um, like you were saying earlier. And we're here to support the families. You know, families feel different types of anxieties. There's other, you know, other family anxieties that get involved. There's work anxieties, there's work pressures, stressors, and so forth. So if, if there's any families within CARD that ever feel overwhelmed, feel anxious, feel that they need to talk to someone, they obviously do have their team and their supervisors to be able to talk to. But if they feel they need more professional care, more professional care, they can always contact me in my department as well. And Vince, I, you know, are there, I don't, this is just out of thin air, but are there any statistics? Uh, I feel very strongly that when one or both of the parents is having big anxiety, that the child will have more anxiety. Do you find that in your practice? Um, and yeah. do, is it's pretty much a reality, right? Yeah, 
the more the parents are feeling and displaying their anxieties about whatever the topics may be, the more the research does show that children will then uh, uh, demonstrate more anxious type of behavior. And I'm so if the parents are anxious about things, regardless if they're actually talking about their anxieties in front of the children, the children will be able to uh, feel that anxiety and most likely will raise some some of their own anxiety. And I'm going to call foul on myself here because, you know, I had a little bit of a, you know, I, I call it a nervous breakdown in the second year of therapy because I became agoraphobic and couldn't leave my house and couldn't drive my car. And, you know, my life got real, real small and I was right. having lots of panic attacks. And I wasn't going to do a thing about that. I just, you know, I'm just going to be honest with all of you. I was going to sit in my house and I remember sitting one day and thinking, oh, gosh, I guess when he graduates from college, I won't be able to go. Really? You know? It was yeah. that, it was that no. intense. I, I, like, wasn't going to drive my car again. Yeah, and I can and share I w- some of my experiences, too, where after my husband's death, how oh. last year I had my version of a nervous breakdown. And, yeah. and you know, I don't know about you, but I, I was like, well, it's all about Jem, and I'm going to take care of him, but I'm right. not going to take care of me. And it wasn't until a day when I had forced myself to go out because it was something that he wanted to do. And we weren't out 10 seconds and I was, uh, you know, like totally having a panic attack. And he said, I wanna go home, I wanna go home, I wanna go home, I feel like I'm dying. And I was like, what? And I don't, I didn't remember ever voicing that, right. but I must have, because yes. he didn't invent it as yeah. a, you know, a four-year-old. And he said, I want to go home, I want to go home, I want to go home. I don't feel good, I don't feel good, I want to go home. And I thought, oh no, I have done this to my child. And that was when we got me help. Yeah, and I had, I went into the hospital last December for not just physical, uh, not just a bad kidney infection and passing kidney stones, but also because I was on some anti-anxiety medication that turned out not to be the right medication. And so I went into the hospital for both mental and physical reasons. And now this year, why it well, keeps saying to me, I was you were exhausted. exhausted yeah, right. I mean, I had my own version of a mental breakdown. And this year, why it keeps asking me, Vince, mommy, when are you going back to the hospital? And his, he's got anxiety about that. How do I alleviate that anxiety? Well, and the anxiety for you, for him, for-, for him thinking that I'm going to go back into the hospital. He makes right. cards. My, dear mommy, please don't go back to the hospital. He's constantly saying, are you going to have to go back to the hospital? Because that was his experience last yeah. year at this time. Well, and again, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier is, is acknowledging his anxiety and saying, oh, you know, that I, I know you're anxious. I'm going to go back to the hospital. Let's talk about that experience last year. Mommy went to the hospital for X, Y, and Z reasons. Um, the doctors took good care of me. The nurses took good care of me. I was able to rest. I was able to get better. This year, well, I'm healthy. I feel good. I don't have the kidney infections. I don't have the kidney stones. Um, you know, um, I don't need to go to the doctors. I don't need to go to the hospital. So this year, we're going to do X, Y, Z, and we move and we move forward because by acknowledging it and talking about it, it's actually addressing his anxiety, which is. I don't want mommy to leave again. I don't want mommy to be away again. I don't want mommy to be in the hospital, right? To have you removed, again, was something that was completely atypical from what you guys typically do. So when this time of year comes up, it's reminding him of what happened. So you can assure him um, by not only expressing why you went to the hospital last time, but that it's different this year because you're no longer Set for you. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. also the time of year that my husband went into the hospital before he died. Yeah, and I, I think he's got it a little bit cemented that around Christmas time, my mom and my dad go in the hospital, and my dad died when yeah. he went into the hospital. Yes, and now he's going to have to go to the hospital for some tests because he had a seizure on Sunday, which he's oh, never wow. had before. Right, so he had a seizure, and now I'm going to have to go and have him taken in for an EEG next week so he's going to be under some stress as well but i would you know i would guess that he's going to take his lead from you don't you think vince that that's part of what yeah. that's going to be yeah and that's and going to be hard for you saying yeah this goes back to what we were saying about parents anxieties and how they can manifest with the kids if we're keeping it calm and and playful and this is okay and it's just a doctor's visit and they're going to put this weird kind of you know sensors on your right. head you know it's it's you're gonna look like uh you know someone from star trek and, right. 
you know, then it's going to reduce some of the anxiety that is now he'll still have some, yeah. but that it's not a scary thing. This isn't a removal thing. This is it, it's not necessarily even what happened last year. It, it, and this kind of breathes over a little bit over into bereavement and bereavement recovery um, because he hasn't experienced another Christmas since his father's passing. He has since. actually. This will be the second Christmas. Yeah that he's had since his father's passing right but the first one is so different right and and, you know uh uh uh, it it was it was actually it's the first one since his father's passing you're absolutely right season right it was all no second one okay so the more he's able to to receive or to, to experience Christmases and the holidays and and things that don't involve the hospitalization, don't involve right. yeah. um, separation from parents, the more that anxiety will will alleviate. Right, right. Because right now he's like, oh, this is a pattern. Right. And so this year, when you don't go into the hospital, then next year it'll be like, yeah, one one Christmas, mommy went into the hospital, but every other one, mommy hasn't. Right. And so you know, this isn't going to, the pattern. You got where you're interrupting the pattern this year. Yeah. It's hard. It's very hard. It's hard. And, there, and, you know, and stuff keeps coming up. And just when you get one thing, something else pops up. But I think we all have to remember that while the anxiety is ever present, it's not our friend. No. <laughs> like, we don't need to hold but on to it. when you're in anxiety, it's hard oh, to get out of it. So and you can't hard. just talk yourself out of it, it But we have been doing a lot of things on Thursday. I, I don't know if I've told you this, Vince, about mindfulness. And that mm-hmm. mindfulness is the insurance policy. It isn't so much the thing when you're having the anxiety, right? But it's an insurance policy. And one of the things that I'm finding is if I take the time to do like a 30 second thing, even twice a week, right. it takes me longer to get to the anxiety than I would have before. So it's the pre-insurance policy. And and I so that's where I'm at. What do you think, Vince? Agreed. I mean, uh, there's a lot of mindfulness exercises that are extremely beneficial to mediate and to kind of control anxiety. And, but you're right in that it ha- it has they have to be utilized when the anxiety is first felt. So when you're feeling the the anxiety, or maybe there's a situation that's coming up that you know is going to be anxiety producing. Maybe it's public speaking, or or you know a party, or meeting someone that you haven't met. In a time where you can collect yourself you can do some of those mindfulness exercises that will control your breathing will control your thought patterns will be able to de-escalate some of the the rapid thinking the rapid um you know, irrational beliefs that might be going on so that when we're calm we can think more logically we can think more um strategically we can think more um you know balanced so that when you then experience that um, anxious situation or anxiety stimuli, then you're you're better prepared for it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And Vince, we have to let you go because it's time for you to go. You've got a meeting. But can I just tell you, thank you so much, Vince. You you mean so much to us and you're so helpful to so many people. We wish you the happiest of holidays and happy new year. And we can't wait to see you and again in hope January. It's, it's a little bit st- less stressful and stress-free for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, ladies. Happy holidays to you guys, too, and we'll talk soon. Okay, okay thank great. You. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. We had a question that came in on Facebook that I just okay. want to really quickly address. Somebody said, hi, my seven-year-old is ASD, ADHD, and showing major defiance. ABA not covered under my private insurance. I don't know how to help him need some help. He is also still not potty trained number two. How can I get him on the toilet for number two? So I just want to say, you know, a lot is about to change with insurance and nobody knows what, but there are policies that please just look to see, and then you can rule it out if it doesn't work. But there are policies that you can get in addition to the policy that you have, uh, even when you have private insurance that can help to cover ABA. And there have been a lot of people who have discovered that, oh, it's like so affordable and and I can do this in addition. Just check it out. Some people find out it doesn't work for them, but check and eliminate all, that off the list. Um, you might find, you know, fingers crossed with some things changing that come January 1st, you, there are um, more companies that are going to be coming. Cigna, whether they're self-funded or not, is just going to cover ABA for everyone. Really? Okay. Yay to Cigna, okay? So some things are changing and some things are for the better. So 
Take a look and see where you are as of January 1st because we're, you know, days away. The other thing though, don't wait, is help yourself um, get a 15-day free trial of skills. They take your credit card and on the 15th day they will charge it. So look at it for 14 days. But um, also, and I would say even before that, go to ibehavioraltraining.com and, and look at the training that they have. It's probably eight, nine dollars. Um, for compliance. Um, one of the things that we know with defiance, um, if, and if we want to get compliance from a child, is that you have to up your praise, which I think is a great thing to talk right. about today. We, Whatever, forget, we think it's always the negative that you have to but focus honestly, on. But honestly, I love Hank Moore, who works here, and um, Hank, if you, you know, if you say to him, somebody in school is having a hard time and he says, oh, have we upped the praise? That's the first thing he said. Oh, have we upped so the, the praise? So the reinforcers are important. Yeah, praise, 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 praise. Find something, something that they do right and praise them for it. And you see them have like a little, like what just happened? Right. Right? Because you've been saying to them, don't do that, don't do that. Because that's what we that's do as parents. That's the natural parents. reaction. We all do that. That's not just you. But go to the other extreme find something Positive to praise reinforcers. and then you will see, but there's a whole training about compliance um then for the potty number two you got to up the reinforcer for that it's different for every kid but find out what his currency is we had um they had the lego knights that came mm -hmm. in the tall cans mm -hmm. and my son we took him to the toy store we went around you know and he got to put things in the cart and we saw like what he really wanted and we said okay we're gonna buy this Lego night in the can and he was so excited, you know, because we went to the register right. and he was so excited and I put it up on the towel bar in front of the toilet and I said, when you poop, you get that every day and he didn't get it. He wanted it and I was like, poop in the potty, yay, and then you'll get it. And it took him two days to figure it out. Man, he was like a machine. He was really? going to figure out how to get a poop in the toilet so he could have that night and, and then he took the night and he got to play with it the rest of the day. And then the next day he went back to take the night and during the night I had packaged it all up, put it back on the to towel bar. And here he comes and, he, and I said, no, nope, poop in the potty and then you get the night. And it took him probably a week of realizing, oh, she means business about that. And it had that man, he wanted that night. It's got to be something they want. So I have friends who they, he wanted an ice cream cone. Right. And they said, you poop in the potty, we go for ice cream. And it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. And they went and got in the car and went to the store and got the ice cream cone and the thing. So you identify know, the positive reinforcer. And then make that, the only time they get that is when there's poop in the potty. And they will, if it's a big enough reinforcer, they will figure it out. Then there's, you know, there's stuff that you can take data on and right. it's feeding them the right stuff right. and so on and so forth. But that's the, the short answer of it. Anyway, we're going to take a break. We'll and when we back. come back, we're going to delve into some news and update you on some things with Nancy. So stick with us. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me today. For the month of December, we're going to be making wrapping paper. The skills we'll be focusing on today are pattern making, which is an academic skill. While you're doing this, you can also work on colors and shapes with your child. The materials you'll be needing are brown paper bag, paint, water, paintbrush, a tray or paper plate, paper towel, a sharp knife, which the adult will be the only one using, scissors, cookie cutters, and potatoes. And of course, you can always use pre-made stamps or sponges to use. All right, let's get to it. The first thing you wanna do is you're gonna take your potato and you're gonna cut it in half. So now I've got two stamps I could possibly use. So I'm gonna make a star and you can always do this freehand. I like the cookie cutters because it makes it a little bit easier. I'm gonna take the cookie cutter, I'm gonna squish that in there. And I'm gonna take my knife I'm gonna cut along the edge and then I'm gonna pop it out. And voila! Now that I've done this, I'm gonna peel out the potato. And pull this out, and ta-da! There's my star. I'll be taking my recyclable paper bag and cutting it open. I'm just cutting along the edge. Now that I have this done, I'm gonna remove the handles like so, and then here you are. 
All right, now that I have this ready, it's a great time to have the kids join in. So I'm grabbing my reusable plate, and while you're squeezing out the paints to use, this is a great time to have your kids label the different colors and to discuss how to mix the colors together to make secondary colors. Now that I have my paint and my stamps ready, well now it's time to start making the fun patterns. So I've got my piece of paper in front of me. I'm gonna take my star stamp and I'm gonna just dip it in the green paint I just mixed. See that there? And now I'm gonna place it onto my paper. Depending on the skill of your child, when you grab your stamps, you can ask them to label the shapes. You can start making the pattern, and I can ask my child questions like, you know, what comes next? Or have them come up with the pattern themselves, just straight from their head. Here are a few examples of wrapping paper that I completed today. When you complete your wrapping paper, again, I hope you take a photo of it and share it with us on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash autism live. I look forward to seeing them and seeing you next month. Bye. Can you see me? Can you see me flying by your side? Welcome back. We got a lot yeah. to cover. Now, one of the things that we had mentioned when Vince was with us is, you know, talking about anxiety, right. that you had an event happen this week that's completely out of the ordinary yes, first on, time. On Sunday, my son had a seizure in the car. For the first time. First time never I've had ever, a seizure. No, he's never had a seizure. Scared the, you it, know, what's out of you. It was an absolutely terrifying experience. He started convulsing and talking gibberish and, and convulsing in his seat. We were in the car. Then he passed out. Yeah. And then he came to. And the whole thing lasted about two minutes. And, and, and I you, went to the hospital. You were afraid. Like, you thought when he passed out, you thought you were losing him. I did. I mean, it, yeah. it's such a terrifying experience. And for you parents out there that experience seizures, and I know some of you have kids that have them on a very frequent basis, it's a terrifying experience, and it, it really rocks you to your core. Yeah. Um, and we went to the hospital, and all the hospital did was kind of do tests to show, to see if he was okay now. Right. They didn't really give me anything to go on. Yeah. Um, so. And now you've been inundated with all kinds of information, and you're not unaware of seizures yeah. um, because of you know being in the autism community. But you're you're in the moment right now of I don't know what's happening. Right. And you have to go through the tests, and, and I'm taking him to Children's Hospital on Monday to yeah. get an EEG and see if there's seizure activity still going on because this could be the start of something. I right. don't know. And it's and in the meantime, you're afraid of is another one going to happen? I'm very and, afraid of that. And, and am so I not going to be with him at the time? Right. Where will he be if another one happens? And there's a lot of I mean, let's just call you know, there's a lot of fear and anxiety yes. over that, and a loss of control yeah. that comes with all of that. And that would be hard for any parent, but also because it happens to be the holidays, and because you're a single parent now, and that that's relatively new to you. You know, it's all a little much. And I think good on you, Nancy, for like sharing that with people because I think there are other people who are probably dealing with things that are overwhelming for them. Right. And because you always look so put together, Nancy. Well, on the inside, there's a wreck right now. <laughs> well, I can tell you that. And, and we should also say, as if that wasn't enough for the week, that you've had a rather intense week and you've been in the press and had yeah, people stalking some, you. Some of you may have seen that I've been in the press because I was at one time married to Matt Lauer. And of course, the sexual harassment charges against him have been everywhere, headline news. Uh, I don't think anybody that's, there's anybody that's not aware of that. And I have had much, I've had a lot of press uh, after me for statements and for my insight into that situation of which I'm mean, coming to your house. Yeah, yeah. Before, before this even came out, I had somebody come to my house and knock on my door to tell me it was going to come out. And what was my reaction to it? And of course, I didn't know, they caught me off guard. It was totally out of the blue. And since then, there have been at least, I've had four visits to my house from, from press, wanting comments and statements. I've also had numerous phone calls, requests for interviews, requests for live interviews. Uh, I have made statements. I have made a statement I did to ET that ended up on the wire services that I was shocked that this had happened um, because it wasn't consistent with the Matt Lauer I know in terms of some of the accusations right. um, that he has, particularly in 
since we've been divorced has been nothing but kind and wonderful to me. However, I don't want to negate in any way the experiences of what the so-called victims yes. have had to say. By saying that I'm shocked and he's not, it's not the person I know, I don't want to in any way negate their experience. So it's a delicate balance. And in the middle of all of that, you know, I mean, for people to understand that, you, you know, you're still an autism mom raising a 16-year-old by yourself. Right. And you guys know, you know, we go through our days and um, you, you, you know, somebody, the first knock on the door and you were expecting a therapist. Right. And with the dogs barking and you open the door thinking it's a therapist. And I'm there in my pajamas with my hair sticking up everywhere and it's a... And reporter. it's a reporter, the dogs are barking, and Wyatt's saying, who is this therapist? Is this I don't want teacher? her. Right, right. You know, it's like something out of a movie, right. quite frankly. And that's, you know, we all turned on our news and saw that, you know, he was let go, and we yeah. saw that. But just to know that, you know, there were other things that were happening on top of that. So it's been an extraordinary week for you. Not your typical, even no. Nancy Allspa week. Right. Um and, you know, and, and when you said to me that when you called me and said that Wyatt had had a seizure, I said, well, there's been a lot going on. Like if there was stress that was, I mean, imagine for a boy with autism having people knocking at the door, stressing you out right. and stressing the, you know, your animals out. Right. That's a lot. It's a lot. It is a lot. Um, so in any case, we can understand why you have anxiety and uh, we we wanted to at least address that because you have been in the news and for right. people to know that that's part of what's going on. Uh, let's take a really, do we have a short break, Samantha, that we can do? We have a lot of news and I want to talk about the Coda Pillar. All right, let's talk about the Coda Pillar then. Okay. Uh, and I have, um, oh, I love this guy. You know, we did our um, Sensitive Santa this weekend and we have a gift guide out that's right now, a toy and gift guide that gives recommendations to you for lots of different age ranges. And this, my friends, is my preschool top toy of the year. I just think that this Fisher Price, and it's just, um, I love that there are so many different things that this toy does. First of all, I don't know a child who wouldn't want to play with this, right? Okay. Second of all, it's like a train in that it's cars, right? But it's different segments of the caterpillar. And each segment, and of course it I'm holding something. up a green one, it does something. This one has a little symbol on it that shows that it's sound, right? And this one has a turn on it. So I love the fact that fine motor, a child is putting this together, they have to push, right. they have to pull, right? These are all motions that OT is gonna work on them later that build towards being okay. able to write. So push and pull, putting together, and then um, he's really loud, I am gonna say that, and then he's gonna take off running. Um, <laughs> there he goes. Uh, and so you push the, the little start button here, and he, first he's gonna light up and show you all of the things that he's gonna do. He's doing it right now. He's showing us, and, he, and you, I don't know if you guys can see that he's lit, lit up, and now he's gonna take off and he'll do each one of them. Although I don't know if he likes the glass. And if he doesn't like the surface, he may be pausing to do that here. Um, here he goes. Can you see? Yes, he lit up. See. Yeah. I wonder if they can for the lights. But he may not That's go because right. of the glass. No, no there he's he goes. coming. Okay. okay, great. So now he goes straight, and then he's going to turn. And if he meets an obstacle, he will stop, and then the child can readjust, take apart, and have him go again. But this is teaching coding, you guys, to three-year-olds. Um, what this does is it shows them cause and effect. That if it says this, and, you, and it's teaching sequencing, because if it says it does this and it's gonna come after this, then the child gets to critical thinking eventually of, well, I want it to go over there, but first I want it to go here, and so they learn to segment it together. It's a train, but it's a, a caterpillar, it's a coding toy, it's working on so many different skills. So this is part of the think and learn sequence from Fisher Price. Right. They are the most clever toys, but this is my favorite one. And you can see it comes beautifully packaged, and I love, we took this one out of the package. Fisher Price, you remember how we used to have to cut things out right. on Christmas yes. morning? Oh. They've made it so much easier. They've got these that little turn things. That alone is buying the toy. <laughs> Ooh, I'm telling you. But this is a great toy. It's from three to six. It's preschool. It's our top toy. We want to thank Fisher Price for participating in our Sensitive Santa. Um, 
Oh, I, yeah. he's like, why are you taking me backwards? Um, but in any case, you can buy other segments, you guys, to be able to do other things. So this is a toy that can grow with the child. That's why it's think and learn. Yeah. I absolutely love this. I think Fisher Price is onto something really incredible with these toys. So remarkable toy. If you have a child that's in that three to six range, I highly, highly recommend this toy. Don't you wish that our kids had been... Uh, able to have because I would have yes. had this I would have been all over this I would have had this too and and how much Wyatt who loves trains right. how much would he have loved yeah, this yeah he would have loved and, it and really honestly people go well is it really teaching coding yes the next phase up from this is scratch so once your child can do this, Scratch will make total sense to them. Okay. And then you go from Scratch to another, like to Python. I'm telling you, this is it. This is where it's at, okay. the future of everything. And they put it together in thousands of different ways. Oh, yeah, I just set him off again. I like how he burps, sort of. Um, and when you get to the one that makes noise, he stops and he, and he does a little noise. And it's fabulous toy. Okay, so this is the Code A Pillar. It's from Fisher Price. Think and learn, and it is fantabulous. Love this toy. We're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back with our In the News. Lots of stories for you, including a new number for prevalence. Stick yes. with us. What is autism? 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 Uh, <laughs> I've been asking myself that for a very, very long time. Um, let me think about that one. <laughs> um, trying to, uh, just, um... Jeez, let me think. <laughs> oh, man, that's a big one. Yes. Uh, autism, uh... Autism is a neurological disorder that affects many of our kids in different ways. It's a learning disability that affects the cognitive functions of the brain. A lot of people have the misconception that it's a disability, and it's really not. I look at it as, like, a special gift. When one person thinks differently from another. It's an opportunity for everyone to learn to understand someone that's a little different than them. Autism is the ability to educate. They're given so much talent in different areas. To me, autism means a chance to be with and be around people you really care about. Autism is beautiful. It's a way of seeing the world differently. It's always unique, totally intelligent, and sometimes mysterious. Happiness that, that, that comes out of my um, son's um, hard work. It's a movement. Unpredictable. That's, That's right. right. Awesome. Love. The field I want to work in. Laughter. Fun. Joy. Autism is beautiful to me. I want you to remember these three words. There is hope. Adults don't really believe kids. They'll think, ah, oh, kids are kids. What are they talking about? But when a child stands up for what they believe in, it's so strong and powerful. I first got involved with autism advocacy four years ago when my friend was diagnosed. When I found out about my friend's diagnosis, I didn't really understand what it meant. matter to me or change our friendship. I didn't look at her any differently. We still had so much fun together. Now I know that she experiences life a little differently than me, and that's okay. Knowing what she goes through has helped me to understand and be more caring towards other people in similar situations. I got involved with ACT Today because I wanted to do whatever I could to help. They provide options like behavioral therapy, medical care, social skills programs, assistance to military families, and much more. Being there for my friend was my number one priority. I've been volunteering and spreading the word about the cause via my social media platform because raising awareness is a crucial first step. There needs to be more kids and teens involved to make sure that our voices are heard just as loudly as the adults. You may be small like me, but your acts of kindness are not. Welcome we're back. back. Yes. Yeah. Um, we're going to shift to in the news now. We usually do that at the top of the show, but we Vince had a meeting, so we switched things around. And otherwise, this would have been the top of the show, yes. that it, there is a new report out suggesting that the incidence of autism in the United States is 1 in 36. This is the National Health Center for Health Statistics, the NCHS, which released this new report. It is not from the CDC. 
um, just to make sure that everybody knows that. Because it's always a thing where we're having to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. I kind of hate it when they change around the criteria a little bit. Um, because sometimes they do that even when you're comparing apples to apples. But for people, this is mystifying to me that this is this came out on Friday, right? And that I, you know, looked for it right. in the news to find the thing to send to everybody to say I want to cover this, and it's nowhereville. It was kind of hidden. News. This is in Dr. Bob Sears' blog on Taka. Yes, the Taka Now blog. It's so it's t a c a now dot org. If you, um, but t a c a now blog dot com. If you want to go that way, right. And Either Dr. Way, Sears says there. that's one in fourteen kids. One in fourteen. This report is hard to digest. My heart is in my throat. The rapid incident increase of prevalence of autism and developmental disabilities should stop any human in their tracks, which we agree. Absolutely, we agree. I do want to point out, though, for the naysayers who are like, well, it's not the CDC. Remember, we're comparing apples to apples. So the previous, this is one where they're doing a survey of parents. So in 2014, the survey demonstrated that the rate of autism was 1 in 45, which is 2.24% uh, of the U.S. population. In 2015, it rose to 1 in 43. And now... We are at 1 in 36. Right. So that's just comparing this study with this, this study, study with, with this study. study. So, so clearly numbers to be alarmed about. Yeah, that's 2.76%. We're encroaching upon 3% of the population. Yeah. And with each CDC report, we wait four years until the information is made available, by yes. the way. That's important to note, too, that the CDC numbers it's are going to be always dated outdated. By the time right. we get the CDC numbers, it's always outdated. Uh, and, and I am sick and tired. I'm going to say this succinctly. I am sick and tired of people not listening to parents. Yes, this is a parent survey, but I'm sick and tired of you not listening to us. Uh, we are a group of people. We are not crazy. Uh, if you, we have doctors backing us up saying that our kids have autism, you don't get to just say, oh, well, don't listen yeah, to them because they're it. parents. Right. Not to be dismissed. That's right. Okay. Okay. So um, check it out, takanow.org, or you can go takanowblog.com. It's in both places. Also, um, there was a study that about anxiety, which may heighten social communication challenges in autism. And this is what we were talking with Vince about a little yes. bit. And this is that chicken or the egg yeah. age old question. Which one comes first? Anxiety. This study says anxiety exacerbates social communications in children with autism, not the other way around. So it's not that social communications in children with autism cause anxiety. Anxiety comes first. Yeah. And, and when you think about it, there's a certain amount of sense that it makes that if you're having anxiety, then you don't rush to go make a connection with someone. Right. And so you don't make that connection. So you've missed a little bit of what you needed to learn about how to make that connection. So by the time the kids are six, seven, eight, they're so far behind socially, and now they've got anxiety that's such a problem. They're really recommending that you get your child treated as soon as you start to notice the anxiety. They really recommend a cognitive behavioral approach. I was saying earlier that that's how my anxiety was treated, and it works with kids. I have to say, if you're looking for a good book, Dr. Jed Baker has a book on treating um, anxiety in uh, children, and it's for all children, but there's a specific chapter just about treating anxiety in children with autism, and it's the best book. Dr. Uh, Ned Baker? Dr. Jed, Jed Baker, who's been on the show a couple of times, okay. and I adore him. He's the real deal. Um, he also wrote the book No More Tantrums. So get Dr. Baker's book. I always wax poetic about it because okay. I think it's so great. Because he not only covers everything in the book, but he says... And he says right in the beginning of the book, by the way, I, you know, I'm not reinventing a wheel. This exists. But what I'm going to do is tell you the most important piece, which is that you have to get buy-in from the kid because the kid only knows their experience. So they only know anxiety and they think that's how this works. Right. And so you have to be able to convince them to want to work on it. Okay. And he helps you with that. And okay. I think that's what's pivotal in his book. Okay, great. Okay, so, so moving on, we also wanted to say to you that there's a new study out that suggests that uh, looking at just the genetics of autism that it may be that the, the roots of this are in the cells. 
Um, they're calling it a disease in this, which is troublesome for us, right? We, yeah, we don't like right, calling it right. a, a disease. Um, but um, they were able to take skin samples and just look at the reaction that the skin samples ha had and fascinating how the science works for that. But they're seeing basically, you know, we always worry about is the nature versus nurture. Right. How much of this is front loaded in the genetics? How much of it is environment? And we keep coming back to the fact that it's both of them. Mm -hmm. But everybody argues back and forth. But it's more this, but it's more that. But this was just looking at the skin cells and not looking at all the other things that uh, behavioral things that they're exposed to and says, we think that there are some roots yeah. here. Genetically. Suggested abnormalities in the electrical firing of neurons may lead to behavioral and development. And you're brave. Symptoms. I was not going to go into all that. <laughs> okay, well, that's the only thing I'm going to say. That the electrical firing of the neurons may lead to behavioral and developmental symptoms in autism. So there you go. So you can check that out as well. Uh, we have to give a big shout out. I, you know, it's the time for Christmas miracles, and there have been several that have happened for autism care and treatment today in the last couple of weeks. There have. We've got we a lot of people donating and doing fundraisers. And, and, and can a I say, going on. It, it's, all, it's all amazing. There's never enough, right? right? So never if enough. you feel like, well, I didn't do it, then don't feel like you, you know, oh, they've got enough. No, because no, there are more grants. You can go to ACT today and you can make a donation. This is the time of year to do it. We have it, so many families. It, and, and yet there are some people that are mentioning it up and stepping up and doing some incredible things. I want to give a shout out to a high school friend of mine. Ed, uh, Malie Spencer, excuse me, Malie, changed his name, uh, Spencer Malie, uh, who donated $1,000 to my And I got a $1,000 donation to my personal page from my friend Nancy Glass. And you just got to, you know, these people. I know, it's that amazing. Just, what an amazing thing to be able to do. But so... Um, there are different card offices around the country that are doing fundraisers. They've, they've adopted a grant that they're trying to fundraise for. And to our card Manassas office, uh, they, I, I'm, I'm just gobsmacked by this. I love this story so much. I even spoke to somebody at this restaurant. It's McKiernan's Lawton Street Tavern, and they're in New Rochelle. You know, New, New Rochelle, New York. New Rochelle, New York. You, you know what New Rochelle was famous for, right, from the Dick Van Dyke show. That's where Rob and Laura Petrie lived. Oh, really? Okay. New Rochelle, New York, of course. It's in the suburbs. Up I just north of, New, of New York City. Oh, I'm a big Dick Van Dyke fan. Right. But anyway, so this McKiernan's Lawton Street Tavern, uh, the card office said to them, hey, can we do a fundraiser here? It's happening on Friday, this Friday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, in New Rochelle. And this restaurant said, well, of course you can. We do all kinds of charity things, and that's great. And, you know, we'll make a banner. And they made this amazing banner. You can see it up there on the screen. And then they were saying, now, what exactly is this for? And they're raising money for a computer, a computer. for a five-year-old who has a family member who is in the armed services. Right. And when the owner of McKiernan's found out, he started to worry about... Well, I hope we raise enough money. I mean, let's do this right, but I hope we raise enough money. And he worried about it to the point where he went and bought the computer. So. Now, they're raising the money to offset it. Right. We want to be clear about that. But I love the spirit of somebody who says, well, I just can't yeah. bear, take a look at these wonderful people. I just can't bear, you know, like, let's make sure. Let's go so get, they, let's they go get the computer. Sure that it's, happen. it's like we, that thing that I love that I used to have on my wall that when you're going after Moby Dick, make sure you pack the tartar sauce. So right. he's like, I'm buying the computer. Yeah. So this has happened, happened in one way or the other. But you can help uh, by going. McKiernan's go Lawton McKiernan's, Street Tavern in New Rochelle, New York. And, and all of our love to them. What an amazing, amazing amazing place. I have heard that the food is amazing at this place. So go there this Friday, go every Friday, because these are the kinds of people that we need to hold we need to dear support. and love because they're people. I got goosies. Um, love, love, love McKiernan's. You're, you're absolutely fabulous. And we're Thank almost you out so of time, much. but we've got another great story about that yes. went viral. Yes. A nine-year-old boy. Did um I, this George video Yenol it's made a my Greek morning. Name, y Yenolis. I, this video made my morning. We, in fact, I really want Beery to reach out and see if we can get Dad and Son to be on. So here he is, fourth grade, nine-year-old boy, and he was asked to give a speech about his autism to his class. And so he made a video, a video which Dad helped at it. Oh my gosh, it's so good, you guys! You've got to go online. Just put nine-year-old autism, and it'll come up. And he's funny he, that you can put one in thirty-four autism, and that won't. Come 
come right, up, exactly. a nine-year-old with autism film, and it will it will absolutely come up because everybody's watching it. And he tries to explain why he does some of the things he does. But and I'll tell you what, at the end he good. says, "I'm a kid just like you." And this explanation, pretty darn good. I think it's like everybody should get it, forward it to your families uh, that you're going to spend the holidays with that aren't very sensitive. Forward it off to them so that they can see, ah, and it's straight from the horse's mouth. He's telling his own story. And he I loves love... music, dancing, Harry Potter, Minecraft, and tacos. And he's quite the little uh, break dancer. Okay. He's got, he's got some moves, and Dad's quite the good editor. I'd love to have them on the show. Uh, but check it out, you guys. It's it's a wonderful thing. And send it to people who don't know what autism is or ask you what are, who better. No. Oh, oh my gosh! Yes, we and have an. We, we have absolutely a very important have thing. to do um, in memory. Have you got his picture there? Um, and We've I've got a do young, not have his young name, and I want to make sure I get it Brandon, right. who okay. unfortunately passed away, and the family wanted donations to go to Act Today, which we, this is just incredible that in their grief they thought of this. I can't even imagine this young man who uh, just such a light, such a light. And for the parents to have it that together, they said, you know, in this time and this holiday, they want. So there is a GoFundMe page um, that you guys can go find, and it's for autism care and treatment today. And there you go. There's his picture and his name, Brandon Sean Luong. And uh, they're hoping to help as many um families in the state of Arizona that had put in grants as they possibly can. So I know selfless that over, of them. I know that over $5,000 was raised in the first few days. And so we encourage, if you have a little extra money, what a wonderful thing to do for a family who is facing the, That's right. the worst at this, at so this time of year. So please make a donation in memory of Brandon. What a special little light and making a difference right. even after all of this. Yes. My heart goes out. I know.